Hi everyone, alongside Mike Trosel, I'm Dave Giancola. Thanks for joining us again for another US Open Classic Finish. Well, in 2016, the US Open was contested at venerable Oakmont Country Club in Western Pennsylvania for the ninth time. Now, despite soaking rains on both Thursday and Friday, play was back on schedule by Sunday afternoon. Irishman Shane Lowry started the final round with a four-stroke lead, but was quickly passed by Dustin Johnson, who had close calls in the U.S. Open in both 2010 at Pebble Beach and 2015 at Chambers Bay. Mike, let's pick up the action early on the back nine as Johnson looked to break through and capture his long-awaited first major title. That is just oh, yeah, good good job, I guess the answer is so far so good. If that's the case for Dustin Johnson, that is pounded. day not to be a golf ball that was ripped saying that was 20 yards further than Jason Day's driving that hole now Lowry for birdie now back on the 14th hole Jason Day with his iron, find the fairway here. Yeah, hang on. Be fine, yep, you just want to lay up here so you can give it a shot. This hole is back in the left. Scott Piercy at 13. Piercy's just two shots back, maybe yep. one shot back if there is a penalty on Dustin Johnson, and we're still checking on that to get the word. Shane Lowry lining up his putt here now for par. Curtis, can you tell what he's waiting for? Well, Shane Lauer's been waiting right here. You come off the, the 12th tee, and the group in front, and all the officials and volunteers are walking, so you let them pass. Four feet, four inches. Now Garcia on the par three thirteenth. This really fits his shot shape. Farther into the green he gets it, the more to the left it'll go. Uh, that one's Gonna be a good look for Sergio. Let's go down to Scott McCarron. Scott? Yeah, actually, uh, as I was walking on the fairway, DJ came up to me and just said, they asked him, we're gonna look at it after the round. So oh. no more talk about it right now. They're just gonna look at it after the round. DJ says, there's no way I deem to move that ball, so I'm not even worried about it. Well, that'd be a great way to think about that. Just kind of try to get that out of your mind. It's not in your hands. It's all about controlling the controllables at this point. 
and all you can control is your game. Third shot here for Brandon Grace. Yeah, Joe, he had a beautiful, just a stinger forearm, just tried to chase it up there. Made a great putt there. Looks like he's got that to get to two under par. Four shot for Daniel Summerhays. It's well played, and this has a chance. Daniel Summerhays needed that. He has been leaking oil. He's had four out of the last five, five holes have been bogeys, so that might turn him around a little bit. Well, that gets him back to two over par for the championship. Four over on his round. Opportunity here for Scott Piercy. He made a long putt on the previous hole. Got to give Piercy a lot of credit here because he was struggling mid-round yesterday. Has held it together to this point. See the screen here. How much it slopes right to left. Come on, get in there. Has he done it? Oh. He'll stay two back. Race for birdie. Nice, pretty clean scorecard there. Well, DJ's made three pars on the 12 thus far. Only one birdie this week on the par fives. We see this a four over 253. Just headed out to the right. If I'm DJ, I gotta feel like what do I gotta do to win one of these major championships? For what happened at Whistling Straits at the PGA. Now this hanging over his head the rest of the nine. Ahead to 13. Birdie putt for Sergio Garcia. Two back. Can you hear me now? What a good putt for Sergio. Oh, oh boy. Been a long time since the scissor kick, but Sergio is still a major factor. Now to 14. Jason Day's lengthy birdie putt after a weak approach. Yeah, he just pushed it out a little bit. I was expecting to drift on the breeze and get a fraction more draw. As the ball's on a little upslope, but safe. And now he's left himself a swift putt with quite a big swing from right to left. There's a little knoll in the green, and he's just on the left edge of it. So he's got a sort of putt over the edge of the ant mound, then it slips down the other side. Pretty quick round the hole. Better part of 37 feet, 7 inches. Boy, Pat, can you call that right? It was so fast. And a great touch there for Day. It birdied that hole twice in the last two rounds. Yeah. 
new bowler. Now Lowry on the 12th tee, going for a new ball. And what a tough tee shot it is. This whole fairway, all the way from tee to green, slopes severely from left to right. <coughs> Oh, he's doing a good job of hanging in there, guys. Just got to carry that right-hand bunker. From this tee, it's only going to be about 260 yards, though. Should not be in play, and it's downhill 10 yards. He has got that driver on cruise control. Nice high draws every time. That's big down there, Steve. Watch this ball. It might filter all the way over to the first cut. Easy. Just how much slope there is in these fairways. He just might have a go at it. That's kind of unfortunate up against that first cut like that, but good tee shot nonetheless. Up to 14. Garcia on the tee here at 14. OGC! Perfect shot to hit off this tee. Cut up the right side so you can have the flattest area to hit from and approach with the best angle. Brandon Grace at 13. Three back. Lift. Lift. Oh. That'll be fast. Dustin now on his third shot. Yeah, Steve, and I'll tell you what, this is not a very good lie. He's going to be looking at someone 10 yards left of the green trying to use the slope. He'll kick it down to the right. If he can get this anywhere just on the front of the green or just below the hole, it'd be a great shot. Trying to manage the ball out of this rough. It's a little bit like dropping a ball in your tennis shoe and trying to get a clean contact with it. Your man, Dustin! He's got to play it defensively. Not a good shot to get it on the green. Just hard to manage the distance that's going to come out of that rough. He left it underneath the hole, so he's got a decent look. Can't help to think he's just got a lot racing through his mind right now. Not knowing exactly where he stands. 115. The driving iron for Jason Day at 15. Just trying to whip it over the top of the hill. This fairway tilts a lot from left to right. So slightly safety first one. Good tee shot there by Day. Back to 12. Dustin lining up his birdie at 12. Yeah, just inside 17 feet. Steve, this putt's going to be moving left to right. But again, he's left himself just below the hole. He's got a good opportunity for birdie. And i got to tell you, Steve, that lie was not very good. He did a good job just to get it on the green. Yeah, that's what it appeared. Pretty good shot he hit. To make this, is this ball going to basically be going dead to the right at the end? This ball will be moving pretty good left to right. But again, putting back uphill. Well, we've said that all day. Dustin Johnson's had these uphill putts. And it's, that's not easy at Oakmont. Yeah, but Paul, I'd certainly be rather putting the uphill than downhill all day. Better believe it. I say not easy. It's not easy to get the uphillers. I asked Jack if he tried to get uphillers at Oakmont, and he said he didn't feel like that uh, the greens would allow that.
for potentially a three-shot lead. Westwood, a real professional, just trying to get out of the way. A few words of encouragement to Dustin Johnson there. After the official came to Dustin and told him there may or may not be a penalty. He ends up that close to a birdie here at 12. And now we welcome you back inside our booth. Jeff Hall from the United States Golf Association is with us. Jeff, first of all, thank you for stopping by. What exactly did you tell Dustin Johnson when we saw you talking to him here at 12? Well, we told Dustin that we reviewed the uh, situation with his par putt on hole five and that the, uh, after looking at the video, the actions that he took could very well have caused the ball to move, that the onus might be on the player in that situation. Um, but we asked him, is there some other reason that the ball could have moved? And uh, he didn't necessarily state another reason, but he said, I don't believe that I caused the ball to move. So it was pretty clear at that point that we, we wanted to make sure we showed Dustin, have an, give Dustin the opportunity to look at it when he finished. But we put him on notice that based on what we saw, the actions could very well lead to a penalty stroke so that he can play the last six holes with that possibility so that he's fully informed. And that's the reason why you told him here at 12, as opposed to waiting for it at the end of his round. That's correct. We just thought that was the only thing we could do. Why don't we take a look at it with you, Jeff, uh, and we'll try to blow it up. Obviously, this is not the official look. Right, and in this situation, the, the, the ball's in play. He had sold the putter once, took a couple of practice swings, as you're seeing here. He sold the putter again, lifts it, and the ball tumbles. And the rules suggest that uh, when the player is that proximate to his golf ball and the ball moves that proximately to the actions that he took, we have to ask the question, could something else have caused the ball to move? Because this could very well be what caused the ball to move. The penalty would be, would be one stroke. Would be one stroke. Right, in this situation. And so uh, I, I would imagine then after hearing you now that you're, you're going to, I think you're leaning towards deeming that what else could have caused it to move but Dustin Johnson then? Well, that's certainly what we saw when we looked at the video, but uh, we think it's only fair that, uh, one, that we notify Dustin so he can uh, uh, adjust his strategy accordingly and also give him every opportunity to see what we saw at the end of the round. We'll watch his shot here at 13. Right now leading by two. Not want to miss this left. Man, that's going to be tough. And I guess the final question, and we'll let you get back to work out on the golf course, Jeff, is what then would be the difference? Because we saw Shane Lowry incur a one-stroke penalty for similar action at 16 in his second round yesterday early. You know, honestly, I did not see that particular video, but in talking with Thomas and others, he readily said, I caused the ball to move. So at that point in time, there, there's not much of a conversation to have. He's, I, I caused the ball to move. So... The question then was, what do I do? I caused the ball to move. What do I do with the ball? Do I play it as it lies? Do I replace it? And our official handled that. But, but in this case, you've got a player who says, I didn't cause the ball to move, at least to this point. Yeah, and then the conversation that he had with, uh, with our referee, um, that was the, the dialogue that went on. But as we looked at the video, we, we have some concerns. And then, again, that's why we wanted to put Dustin on notice that there could be a problem. Couldn't it simply be just on an uneven piece of grass? That's certainly a consideration. Um, and the, the rules of golf contemplate that. But again, at, at this point in the middle of the round, uh, we're not going to take Dustin to go look at it. And uh, we don't want to agonize over it and he needs to keep playing golf is this just going to be like a book of decisions or is this you're just going to get together and make a decision well i think there's there's pretty clear uh, a decision on this that that points us in the into the direction we're going to we're obviously that was not the time to take out the decisions book and have dustin go through that with us we simply wanted to ask the the poignant question was there something else that caused the ball to move and uh, um we, we didn't get past that right his answer to that question was, I don't know. He, he, he was very convinced that he didn't cause the ball to move. But again, the, the wording in the decision, I think, uh, uh, I'm not 
sure that he would necessarily or many people would be that familiar with that particular text but uh, when the rule was rewritten uh, it was presented in a way that um, well we, you know, we took out the the address part so that the rules been improved in many ways and it's all about did the players actions cause the ball to move and the decision I think uh, suggests that that could be the case could be the case Jeff thank you while we were talking to Jeff Hall Second shot for Shane Lowry here at the par five. Well below his feet. Hard to hit the ball solid like that. And he comes up short of the bunker. Short right. Not a bad leave, though. Let's be clear about one thing. It's never easy, is it? It's never easy. We are reminded of that constantly in this game. And many others. This to get to within one. Scott Piercy walks it past the hole. Second shot here at 15 for Jason Day. Can't believe it. Now Dustin Johnson, our leader at 13. In the bunker, he's got an uphill bunker line. It's not that difficult. Just got to get on the green and let it work the hole. Oh, that upslope there made all the difference. Well played. To 14. Sergio's par putt here on 14. And Mike Duffner left it short. A lot of uphill there from the left side of the hole here at the 14th. Shane Lowry looking straight up at the hole. A lot of movement out here, waiting for the spectators to settle down a little bit. Yeah, Steve, he's getting a little agitated, though. You know, he went from a four-shot lead, now he's chasing. And uh, it's tough enough to just change gears, to become more aggressive. Now the little things are starting to bother him. He was actually appears to be waiting for him to putt on 13 green. Now he's ready. Not a difficult shot. All depends on how cleanly he can get the club on the back of the ball. Well, oh, he's got a good eye on it. Did we see another one? That's oh, well played. So we're not sure if that gets him within one or he's tied for the lead. Steve, I wonder if he knows what's going on up in front of him. Well, I, I think, guys, that's a fair question. Sure you know, when we talked to Jeff Hall, he said they're alerting Dustin Johnson so that he's aware of what's happening and what he could incur at the end of the round in order for him to play accordingly down the stretch. Well, then the question is, do those chasing Dustin Johnson know that that's hanging out there in the balance potentially for DJ. Well, if I was Shane Lowry, I would want to know, yes. Better believe it. Just so you know, Dustin Johnson's the only player to get up and down from that bunker all day. But no question about it, everybody should be informed here that has a chance to win the tournament that Dustin may be one shot worse. David Fay, do you have any idea? Can you ask that question for us? Um, I can pass on that comment because it, you're, you're right. I mean, in stroke play, uh, competitors, that's what they should have an understanding of what's going on on the golf course. They're not necessarily entitled to it, but in this case, they, they're all in that same area. And uh, 
And, and also, doesn't if that ball if he deemed not to cause it to move or did cause it to move, aren't they, isn't he supposed to replace it? Yeah, well, the reason he wouldn't get the second stroke, if, if they decide to penalize him, is because he brought in the, uh, the the official, Mark Newell, who's the chairman of the Rules of Golf Committee, and that, based on that conversation, it's impossible for him to have replaced it because he was told to, to, to play it from its new position. So normally he would have to replace it if he did. Yeah, cause any, it to I mean, when you when you move your ball, you uh, you replace it when you cause your ball to move. Here's Piercy for par at 14. He stays three under, two back, and a good sand save for Dustin Johnson at 13 as he goes to the par four capturing today's championship at 1500 feet in the air is the MetLife blimp proudly supporting the game and over 40,000 small businesses. I think it's important here that uh, you know there's no intent here for anybody to break a rule and this is going to be a decision that somebody's going to have to make whether they rewrote the rule in a way that's forced a decision to be made you know, as players, I mean, we want to defend the player there. I don't, I don't know what he actually did. I love Brad's question. But, uh, you know, this this is a can of worms here. And uh, I think it's important that these players all know. And the reality is somebody's going to make a decision here. All, all the referees and all the groups out on the golf course have been notified. Well, that's important. And, Paul, there's one thing. Whatever decision is going to be made, it's going to be against someone, and they're not going to like it. Oh, there's no winner, is there? Yep. Well, you can see his sliced shot into the right rough there. And since he's been, a, a, you know, warned there on the 12th tee, he's hit some bad shots. He hit that loose iron into 12, the pull on number 13. Now he skins one over to the right. This has got to unsettle anybody, especially with his track record here the last few years in the majors. Solis here is he's got some green to work with from that right side and the angle that he's coming in. I look down to 13th, the par three. Shane Lowry is one back. With an asterisk. Well, like the last two afternoons, guys, this is absolutely ideal weather. 13 a day playing 183, probably two or three up, so 186. Play here is just short, right of the hole location. Shane Lowry, who just got married the week after the Masters, his wife Wendy, came in ranked 41st in the world. Won at Firestone in 2015. He won the Irish Open as an amateur in 2009. Portugal Masters in 2012. Turned pro after that Irish Open win. These will be the biggest swings of his career. Light, here. Go! He too finds the bunker. It might actually stay in the grass, and it did. Just held up in that thick rough. Nobody's going to come up and down from that bunker, but DJ. And that little upslope there might help Shane. He knows. It's degrees and inches. Ahead at 15, Scott Piercy. Piercy has really collected himself and is hitting one good shot after another. Now 16. Jason Day on the tee. What a well-controlled, in-balance golf swing for Jason. Just maybe a club short. Might not stay up. No, it's not going to. 
Back to 14. Brandon Grace's chip shot from pin high. Flag out. A little aggressive there, and that is not going to be an easy putt for par. Now Sergio Garcia at 15. be able to play to the green from there unless that ball hopped up into the grass and even then he may not be able to Dustin Johnson leading by one but he's been talked to by the official that may, he may incur a one shot penalty for activity on the fifth green so that is hanging over the finish here at Oakmont Country Club, the 116th United States Open Championship. Shane Lowry started this final round with a four shot lead. He now trails by one. Piercy two back. Sergio three back. Same for Brandon Grace, and here he is for par at 14. Yeah, I'm sure after that chip, this is not the putt he wanted to leave himself, but six foot, a little right to left. He's still not done. Not. Back to 13. Lie is not terrible, but it's sitting down enough. It's just a little flop on the green. It'll chase right to the hole. Not a difficult shot, just he's got to get the speed up at impact. And he quit right on it. Simple shot on Tuesday and Wednesday. Hard shot Sunday of the U.S. Open. Hard to see. It's right behind the flag stick there. So he has work left for his par. It is strange to watch these last holes unfold, not really knowing as we've found the ball for Sergio Garcia that is just buried up in the front here in the mini version of the church views. Oh, that's a terrible, terrible break. Because he's in the hazard, he doesn't have to identify the ball. There's no threat here of hitting the wrong ball. Actually, he has to identify the no, ball. I'm sorry, my bad about that. That's right. If he uh, if he can't play that, he's got to drop that ball in the bunker. Or go back to where he played the last shot from outside the bunker. But the other two options would be, yeah, yeah. Uh, within two club lengths or keeping the point where the ball is between himself and the hole and dropping back in the bunker. And again, as, as they look at that, We don't have a definitive feel or knowledge of what the leaderboard looks like truly. I mean, right now it says that Johnson is leading by one, but we don't really know until the round is over and a decision is made as to whether he's assessed a one-shot penalty or not. In what other sport will wait till the end of the competition to make a ruling? This is ridiculous in my opinion. Here's Jason Day from the front of the green. Almost 90 feet away, and that is a heroic effort to get it within five feet for his par. Joe, it's just very clear that these greens have been rolled, triple cut. This can happen. They're not all perfectly even surfaces, and I think they owe the USGA. They need to tell Dustin Johnson here. Here's his second shot. See if he can hold on. Finds the front of the green here at 14 with a really, really tough putt. Now Lowry here at the par three. This for par. Trying to stay one back at the moment. 
six feet straight up the hill. Keep your speed up, give it a good whack. Interesting finish to say the least right now. It's Dustin Johnson by one. Final round, U.S. Open. Dustin Johnson's birdie putt here on 14. The whole world is pulling for this guy right now. Now back on the tee. The United States Golf Association will address this with us later and again give us more, but let's look at tweets that are rolling in. Social media is blowing up. Cell phones are busy. Rory McIlroy, this is ridiculous. No penalty whatsoever for DJ. Let the guy play without this crap in his head. Amateur hour from at USGA. Jordan Spieth weighs in. Let me get this straight. DJ doesn't address it. It's ruled that he didn't cause it to move. Now you tell him he may have now. This is a joke. And then you've got Ricky Fowler. He's with the previous two. So we'll bring it in here. Two guys who have competed in a United States Open Championship. Paul Azinger and Brad Faxon, before we talk to these two, we're going to bring in Curtis Strange, who has an update. Curtis? Well, talk to my colleague, Rich Beam, over here with Sky Sports. They have the information that they have let all other players know that there is a situation and there could be, you know, a stroke penalty. So they do know, and I'm assuming Shane Lowry knows as well. So now I'll get your opinion on what is hanging over the end of this championship because of that conversation that was had uh, moments ago right behind us at the teeing ground at 12. Well, it's terribly hard for all of us, and it's mainly because of the uncertainty of it. And uh, for Dustin Johnson to have that in his head makes it so difficult. And for Lowry and Piercy to know, and I mean, you know, the, it sounded like Jeff Hall to me, like they've already made the decision that it's going to be a penalty. It sure does. And, you know, I'm fired up. I, I, I think it's really unfair to Dustin because they asked him right away. They almost, you know, they have to take his word for it that he didn't cause it to move. And look at all the bad shots all the other players have all hit all of a sudden. Sergio hit a big hook there. Lowry hit it in the bunker on 13. Not, none of them know what's going on. It's important now that the players somehow get this out of their head and realize now if ever there was a one shot at a time game, it's this moment to play one shot at a time. But if you're Dustin Johnson, okay, you're leading. You've never won a major. You're going into a stretch here where take the 17th hole for example how do you play it are you aggressive do you lay back are you are you needing a birdie can par serve you well you don't know because right now you're leading by one but maybe you're not because you're going to get a penalty shot added to your score at the end of your round well they need to make a decision on this decision and they should make it sooner than later but i'm just saying right this point you can only control the controllables as a player You've got to get back in the moment somehow. This is where the mental battle is probably the greatest it could possibly be for these guys. And the guys with a chance to hoist that trophy have got to get their act together mentally and just pull it together somehow. It's, it's a shame that this is what it is. Uh, we're all frustrated by it. I imagine the viewers are frustrated by it probably as much or more than we are. Uh, but these players, they, the task at hand is the moment right now for Dustin Johnson. We heard the explanation from David Fay. I know there are differing opinions out there, but the penalty would be one shot. They brought the rules official in. They continued on. Come on. And Dustin Johnson cannot get his par putt to fall here at 14. So he'll give one back. 
So that hangs over it. We'll get back to calling golf and leave that to wade through when the time is right. But it's there as we watch these finishing holes here at Oakmont. You know, as if the mental battle's not hard enough for these guys now, this is something that's, uh, you know, unheard of in sports, really. Flesh was in the break. When are you going to take the home run away in the fourth inning? You know, it's like, it's hard. It's hard for all of us. So let's just see how these guys handle it. Here is Piercy at 15 for birdie and a share of the lead. Can't get it to fall. Right now it's Johnson and Lowry tied at the top at four under. So Shane Lowry is tied for the lead now in the fairway at 14. Now Jason Day on the penultimate hole here with driver. How good would it to be here right now? That was so close. It's the face of the big mouth bunker, but still the correct side to miss it on this green. Back to 15. Here's he now for par. He's got to have this. So clutch for Piercy. What a nice, clean scorecard that is. Just the opposite of yesterday when he started off double bogey bogey. Andrew Landry, eight over today. It's hard when a guy's in the last group and he, he drops out so quickly like this to show him, but uh, here's another look. Steady. Okay. Landry will take a lot from this. Might be his best chance coming in to make birdie. 131, just careful not to spin it off the left side of the screen. Players failing to take advantage of this short hole. Nobody's hit a good iron shot in here in a long time. You know, I figure most of the people watching this play golf, imagine, put yourself in these players' heads right now. How would you deal with this? Well, here's Dustin Johnson at 15. Back in 2010, part of the career resume of DJ. Why he's been Mr. Almost of late. B.J. whistling straight, had a one-shot lead heading into the final hole. He bogeyed the final hole, grounded his club in a bunker, thought it was a waste area, assessed a two-shot penalty after the round, and that kept him out of a playoff with Bubba Watson and Martin Keimer. Keimer ended up winning. Here he is at the top. Par 415. I think we've all played rounds of golf. I just need to catch a good lie there to have any chance of reaching the green. But I think we've all played rounds of golf at, at this level professionally where we had something looming over our head like a possible penalty. Uh, after the round where you, you know you just had to go to that book of decisions did you ground your club did you move a loose impediment uh, of course <laughs> this is all magnified times 100 here 
Have you seen anything in that video that tells you that Dustin Johnson caused that ball to move? I didn't. I mean, I sure didn't. But you never know. It's just, it, it's down to the decisions now, and uh, so. While Lowry looks at this putt, which is for birdie and the lead. See if he'll step into it. And it looks like he will here at 14. So we'll stay right here. Nope. Maybe not. He's got to get this just right. Well, look at Jason Day. This is the big mouth bunker we've talked so much about earlier. Look how deep that sucker is. <laughs> Larry's still looking. It's getting important now. This is a bunker shot. You could hold. He's got a nice lie. I know he's got to whip it up quite high. He's got some landing area. In the first sort of third, he's landing in. It's slightly up the slope, but it couldn't get away from him. Yeah, Ken, the guys that have hit it in this bunker are getting up and down close to 50% of the time. This shot is for Eagle, remember? Gain two shots if he holds it. Certainly got a chance. Now he's in real trouble. Can't get up and down from that bunker unless you make a big putt. Surprising from Jason there. Now back to 14. Lowry's finally getting ready to putt. Twenty-seven feet. Ten feet of break. And another putt. You got to putt outside the hole. I mean, how are you thinking here? Am I tied for the lead? Am I one shot ahead? Look at that face behind? on him right now, Zing. <laughs> It's, oh. it's, it's brutal out here right now on these players. Scott Piercy on the 16th tee. Go hard, baby. Go hard. Got to clear that front. Falls front there, and it's not going to do it. It's going to roll back right where Jason Day was. Brutal hole. Now Day from a harder shot now. First time he's left the ball in the bunker this week. It's not the first time somebody has played 17 on a Sunday at a U.S. Open at Oakmont and struggled. Well, there's already been two double bogeys here and two others. Hard to imagine the drama here in this 312 yard par four. That was fourth and no easier. Again, you're sort of goaded into trying the most impossible. Flip it up very quickly, no good to land it on. There goes his chances. Whatever they were coming in here are now gone. Now Lowry. Can he handle this one? Well, the later in the day, the tougher these become. Worst boy event all week. You know, you haven't seen him do that all week long. Sunday afternoon. They're not easy. Second shot again, Dermo. That's the second shot error as much as the putt. Like he just said. And all of a sudden seems very disorganized here at o Oakmont. I'll say, talking to Dermot. It's Caddy, you could hear him talk about his second shot, Dermo. That's what cost him there. Now it's Brandon Grace for birdie at 15. Oh, that would have gotten him within one, maybe two. 
Boy, he has missed some putts here. Last handful of holes could be a much different story for Brandon Grace. Now to 16. Here we are with Scott Pierce. He saw his ball come back off that. Jesus, about a five foot rise on the front of the green. Now this close to 90 feet. So hard to judge the pace. 16's only given up one birdie today. Back to 15. Second shot. Dustin Johnson. Oh. Able to run that past the hole, showing his strength out of that heavy rough. Dustin at the 2009 U.S. Open at Beth Page Black. He was stepping in to hit a shot. The pressure of his step made the ball move. He called a penalty on himself. Finished tied for 40th, so again, has that ruling hanging over him. Here's Garcia at 16. Get it. Tough spot there, about 10 feet below the level of the green. He's going to have, you see there, solid 12 feet to save his par. Big time to make a putt, Sergio. Now at 18. Zach Johnson. This for the first birdie at 18 in this round. Nice way to walk away. Puts him in the top 10, Joe. By far his best finish at a U.S. Open. Two-time major champion. Back to the tee at 15 and Shane Lowry. Well, he's really got to collect himself. Just three putt in the last hole. And here he is with on the toughest hole on the golf course. Or one of the toughest holes in the golf course. Blind tee shot. Fairway slopes a lot from left to right. Church pews on the left. Beautiful drive by Lowry here at 15. Sergio, he saw his bunker shot. Can he convert? How many edges has Sergio hit this week? Look no farther than that putter. That has held him back this week and possibly his entire career. Back over on 15, look at that gallery, some 30,000 strong out here today. All week for that matter. It's kind of strange, none of them know what's going on, I'll guarantee you that. I'm having a blast, but they don't know what we know. <laughs> well, in this day and age with well, social media, with well, texting <laughs> and all that stuff, I would imagine it's started to spread its way across these spectators. Dustin looking at this birdie putt at 15 after driving it in the rough. Again. Not knowing exactly where he stands. As we have it right now, he leads by one with the ruling to come at the end of his round. And it's like an NFL team in the fourth quarter not knowing if they're leading, trailing, or tied. It affects the way you play. But I know for you, Paul, if you're Dustin Johnson, you can't let it affect you as hard as that may be. If you want to be a, you know, a great player, you have to learn to control the controllables. You can't control the bad bounces. You can't control you know, stupid people making dumb comments during the round and you know you just get in your zone do what you can do one shot at a time it's been made as difficult as it could possibly be to stay in your own little world
Good putt. To 16. Scott Piercy left himself a solid 10 feet. Just saw Sergio's putt. Just a bit too easy. That won't be the last bogey at 16, possibly today. See that first bogey in the last 24 holes for Scott. It's a good plan. Just before that, this was Day's putt for bogey. Great try, but he walks away with a six here on the 17th. Unbelievable. <laughs> Out of the 16th. Talked about Brandon Grace and where he stood tied for the lead at 16 last year at Chambers Bay and then he blocked his tee shot at the drivable par four out of bounds right. And here he is three shots back. Okay. C16 just moved back to the second dip most difficult hole today. Just one birdie. Hard to really take on that Whole location over there in the back right. You got to cover that bunker. If you miss it just a bit, that is the last place you want to be. Yeah, Steve, he's going with the four iron right here and just going to try to cut it in there a little bit. And he's going to have to carry the longest part of the bunker, and he does not do that. That is some of the longest, clumpiest rough. At Oakmont, I walked over there early in the week, and it is really thick. All depends on his lie. Back to 15. This doesn't look like much, but it's four feet, four inches. Man, that took a long time to get there. The camera angle made it look so short. You know, Dustin in his head, uh, I think he doesn't believe he's going to be penalized. So in his head, he's probably pretty secure that he's sitting steady at four under par. We're just past quarter after seven in the East. If you're just joining us, here's what we're talking about. Back at five, earlier in this final round, Dustin Johnson with a couple of practice strokes set his putter behind the ball. The ball moved. No, he didn't set his putter behind the ball. Right. He put behind, it behind. Correct. He set he would have not, meant. But as David Fay has said, that's really almost irrelevant now. It's really, did he cause the ball to move? He I, has said no, David Fay. And as we look at it, it hasn't moved yet. And the putter is in the air behind the ball when the ball rolls just a little bit. Well, here's the operative, in my opinion, the operative sentence in the decision that Jeff Hall was talking about. And it reads as follows. If the weight of evidence indicates that it is more likely than not that the player caused the ball to move, even though that conclusion is not free from doubt, the player incurs the penalty. And that's always been the case in the game of golf. Now, the modification to this particular ball at rest move uh, the, in the new uh, uh, language that says that you have to consider each case on its own merits. For example, can wind blow it? That's something new. We saw earlier today that uh, Romain Wattel, same situation somewhat on the second hole, but they considered all the evidence and concluded there was no penalty. Uh, it's, it is, I hate to say it, it is a tough situation. I think the one question that might be asked is, if you if you gathered this doubt if you knew about this doubtful situation sometime on the shortly after the play of hole five why did it take so long as a player do you want to know that there's a potential doubtful situation sooner rather than later all right let's get back to 15 shane lowry's second shot 67 ball below his feet should create a little fade which is what you want here 
Flagstick front right. Oh, not a good shot. And just to finish the story, for those who are just tuning in, all that happened. And then at the T at 12, members of the USGA came up to Dustin Johnson and said, they're going to review that, what happened on the fifth green after the round, and he may still incur a penalty. Right now, he leads by one. Controversy at the end of the 116th United States Open Championship. While he waits at 16. Back at 15, it's Shane Lowry for birdie and a share of the lead. And another very, very fast putt. Out of 17. Scott Piercy, second shot out of the big mouth bunker. He's got a chance here with a good shot. Got it to stop. Now a birdie to get him to three under. What a round he's got going late in the day. Back to 16. We will be commercial free through the end of this final round from here on. Here's Grace for bogey. He had a lot of trouble there to the right of the green. Ball did not come out of that lie very well. Let's see, he gives another one back. For a reset, Dustin Johnson leading by one as he waits at the tee of the par three, 16th. Shane Lowry is right behind him and he has a par putt at 15. Scott Piercy is two back. Jim Furyk is in the clubhouse with a 66, his best round of this championship. He is one under par and three back. See the other names? A lot of finished rounds. Lee Westwood, it's been a struggle today, 10 over. Eight over for the championship. And here is the par try for Shane Lowry. Huge putt to stay within one of the lead. Wow. Everybody's coming a little bit unglued. Suddenly, if there is a penalty, Dustin Johnson would be three under and Furyk in the clubhouse, only two back. Here we are now, DJ on the tee. Four iron from 230 million yards, Steve. This is on a really good line. That's half as good as it looks. It might be the shot of the tournament. Should come back a little bit of an oh, Got through that ridge. Probably going to be standing on those sprinkler heads. Tell you what, DJ could end all the speculation with a with a birdie or two to close, and none of this will matter. That would eliminate any controversy. Right now, it's Piercy for birdie at 17. This is to get him within one shot. I don't think he imagined at the start of the week he'd have a putt this important.
so agonizingly close. Well, I say that because he really didn't like the course when he first got here. Spent a little time with Scott. He was he was a little bit in grumble mode, but boy, has his game come together this week. Now for par, Jason Day here at 18. Flashes from Jason Day. Sir, there is no photography allowed. Thank you. Someone must be sensitive. You see Shane Lowry here at 16. Dustin Johnson is over the green here at 16. Shane Lowry started this final round. Four shots in the lead. The moment he trails by two. And these final three holes here at Oakmont, front and center, Joe Buck, Paul Azinger, and Brad Faxon. And uh, this has got such an odd feel to it the does. ending of this uh, U.S. Open. Well, I've never experienced anything quite like this. Uh, makes me wonder maybe, you know, I think they probably the USJ probably regrets that they said anything at all. Maybe that they just didn't just wait till the end. And uh, but it's a tough call, isn't it, Brad? Whether you let the guy know or not. Um, you know, Scott McCarron in the break was saying, "Hey, look, if the guy said he didn't cause it to move on the PJ Tour, the PJ Tour official would have said, hey, then no penalty.' And uh, it's not an intent issue. Um, it's just really hard to know how they're going to decide whether or not he." cause that ball to move well how about this how about if they took the, you take the other side and say yeah we're going to assess them what if they told them that i think it would have been better off getting the one shot penalty and knowing well yeah i mean it's the uncertainty of where we uh, sit here down the stretch and that factors right into uh strategy you know when you've got a short par four at 17 the difficult par four at 18 right now these guys are trying to negotiate this long par three at 16 well, it is it is interesting to see how this is going to end. Obviously, Dustin Johnson renders all this moot if he were to stay clear of the field by two. It wouldn't matter. Right. Um, but if you were Shane Lowry, you're right there, and you started your day four shots in the lead, and he's hoping for something big here down the stretch to close the gap, which is two. Well, let's just say worst-case scenario, Dustin Johnson's one shot ahead. Worst case scenario for Dustin Johnson, that is. And Dustin Johnson hit such a beautiful shot in here at 16. Who else is going to hold it on this green if he can't? This for Bogey. Day two over for the championship, the number one player in the world. Could not get around that 76 in round one. A heck of a run by world number one. Bunker game let him down this week. And another ruling here for Dustin yeah. Johnson, but this one more straightforward. We can confirm that. As long as you're not on that, if you are, you I'm there. Right there, it's probably good. Okay. I didn't really think about whether I wanted to drop this. Did that ball, so where he does well, I'm not going to do it again. I just well. want to see. Did you realize you, you the line's not that bad. It can roll up to two pumps. Actually, you got to always drop this if you can put it over there. That's good. Well, what I was starting to say is we have confirmed with the USGA they will look at it immediately after the round. As far as rolling back and sitting up against the, I, mean, I think I think it's definitely a possibility that it could it could. Yeah, I'm gonna just play it. Well, that's what I was thinking. The risk here, if you like your lie at all, if you drop and it rolls back down into the hay. Uh, 
And Paul, that's a good call because where he was going to drop it, it could easily have rolled right back against that collar. Then he would have had nothing. So uh, I think it's a good play just to leave it where it is. The lie is okay. A very difficult shot because he's got to get it up, carry it about maybe two or three paces on this green. But it all runs away after the hole. So very, very delicate little chip. Well, Scott, I think you make a very good point because right here, it really goes downhill and you can't tell this from the television view. It looks kind of flat. Hit softly. That's got set ball. Hole runs away from him right there. The green's going to be very difficult. Let's keep it short of the hole. You know, my only thought about what we what we saw earlier with DJ is when he put that putter behind the ball and did not ground his club, it rolled backwards. If he had made done anything to influence the ball, wouldn't it have gone forward? So if he didn't touch it, to me, gravity is what made that ball roll backwards. I don't see how he did anything to influence the ball to go away from the hole. It's just my thought. I think a lot of people are in your school of the thought on that one. Let's go to 18. Scott Piercy in trouble here in the bunker on the left side, but still in it. Out, right? Yeah, so I feel like more like an explosion of things. Yeah, I mean, like I said, 100 is our max. Difficult par four. It's typically played as the toughest hole here during U.S. Open Championships. Not so this week, but tough nonetheless. Here is Johnson at 16. So not to get ahead of ourselves, but what happened to, at Whistling Straits to Dustin on the final hole with an official coming up and having the controversy? Probably going to be the same dynamic when he walks off 18 today. Of what the plan's going to be. But this, nine feet seven inches, straight back up the hill. See if he can make that accelerating stroke he made on the first hole today. That takes some guts. Great putt. There's just a look of determination in his eye right now. And I think he echoes what you guys are saying. If he can get to the 18th hole by two, it won't make a difference. Heads to 17 with a two-shot lead. Guys, the game plan has changed with Dustin Johnson here in these rounds at 17. He said initially it was going to be layup. We saw him take out a driver. We'll see when we get back. Jay Lowry on the tee. What a tough situation this is you're in now. Two shots back. I think you have to take just about dead aim, but how do you stop it around the hole? It's a four iron. Everybody we've seen fly over the right green side bunker hasn't been able to stop it. Shot needs to work left to right. That's some fat fit Shane Lowry shot shape. 
Just a popular spot it's where he has to hit it. Now up at the 17th green. Brandon Grace for birdie. And he makes it. To get to one under, you never know if he birdies the last. Now DJ and Scott McCarron, what did he tell us in the practice round? He told me and you that he's never hitting driver here, but never. He, he waited about five minutes to decide yesterday and hit, went ahead and hit it. And he hit three went again yesterday too. So I think it's a good play. And granite got it was very dry in the practice rounds. Then it got wet, so he did hit it one day. And now he's got the big stick out. And does he need this much? Well, there's a little bit of breeze just slightly back into his face, just out of the right. So I think driver's a good player. And at all costs, he has to keep it right in the flag stick. Stay right there. It's on a good line. Well, he's got to hit a better bunker shot than Jason Day, but that is a very good leave for Dustin Johnson. Back at 18, Scott Piercy's third shot. with the driver. Slide over to the T here at 18. Brandon Grace. Yes, coming off a nice birdie on number 17. Just got to keep this up the left side. Yeah! Looks like it's headed right. It's right where Jim Furyk hit it, even a little right of Furyk. 18, no easy birdie chance today, playing the hardest hole in the final round. Well, not out of bounds, but a block to the right when he needed a great drive like a year ago at Chambers Bay on 16. Back to 16. Shane Lowry for birdie. Steve from 35 feet down the hill. And all I can think about right now is Larry Nelson making it back in 1983 from this position. He made that putt. Lowry can't go. duplicate Nelson. He'll have to tap that in for his par more than a tap. Background's got to be for Dustin Johnson making his way up 17. We'll go up there with him. It's pretty unbelievable. The player who's driven it the longest all week has to worry about his ball moving backwards a millimeter. Well, he just drove it into that big mouth bunker short right here on 17. And I'll tell you, if he's worried about that potential penalty stroke being assessed. He isn't showing it. He can end all concerns here if he can get this up and down. And Paul, he's four out of seven up and downs out of bunkers this week. And Scotty, it gets worse. 
He's ranked 149th in hand saves this year. In the second round, he hit it in big mouth and didn't get it up and down. This is big. But he doesn't need to get it up and down, really. We'll come back to 17. Let's go back to 16. Hard putt for Shane Lowry and missed on the last two holes short putts. Yeah, we can say they're all important, but if he's going to have any chance at all here, he needs to make this one. There's one part of his game that isn't as strong as his driving, and that's his putting, and it's let him down the last three holes. It's been so good all week for Shane Lowry. Here is Dustin Johnson at 17. Scotty, Jason Day knocked it over into the other bunker earlier. Piercy barely got it to stay on the green. Well, it's not that easy of a bunker shot, but you cannot make the mistake of going over. Not the best bunker shot in the world, but certainly adequate for this situation. The closest to Johnson is Scott Piercy. He's on 18, and now this long putt for par. He's two back. So Piercy will give one back here at 18. The lead at the moment will be three. All Dustin Johnson needs to do here is two putt for par. A little bit of break, Scott. This has got, got a lot of break in it, actually, Brad. Especially the last four or five feet. Uh, gets pretty fast around the hole. He's got 25 feet, 10 inches. And it's certainly one you don't want to get too frisky with because you can knock it four or five, six feet by. Scott, there's so many greens here with so much slope. This is one of the flatter ones, but still looking at the greens map, it's got two to three percent right around this cup. You're right. Putts he's hit all week. He's hit some good ones. He knows it. Now a slider. His nemesis. Been pretty stoic all week. for par. And a great 
stroke. That was very close to the length of last year's part of Chambers Bay that he missed on 18, and he made that like a champion. Westwood begs a birdie there. He can't wait to get off the golf course. One more time for par. Piercy made that putt be careful you shot it, up at 18, so it's a three-shot lead on the board shot, right now. Or a two-shot lead. That we don't know. Westwood will hit it first after the birdie at 17. Again, that potential penalty stroke is hanging over Dustin here on 18, but the lead is three. The near misses for Dustin Johnson. Three shot lead in 2010 at the U.S. Open at Pebble Beach, shot 82. Graham McDowell the winner. The penalty at the 2010 PGA Championship, tied for second with Phil Mickelson, the 2011 British Open. But last year he hit the best shot of his life off the 18th tee. And just like Angel Cabrera in 2007, Dustin Johnson pipes it right down the middle. And Mr. Almost, and a guy firmly entrenched on that list of the best to never win a major, will celebrate his 32nd birthday next week. Makes his way down 18, aimed directly for a U.S. Open victory. There's a pairing behind him, Shane Lowry now, a moment ago at 17. And we've almost forgotten there's a group behind Dustin Johnson. Lowry desperately needs to get this on the green. Right. Well, He's this stuck. ball is heading left. Way left, Curtis. Yeah, I just walked by it. It doesn't appear to be a terrible eye coming right up the green. Should chase right to the hole. Not the most difficult shot in the world. Now's not the time to celebrate here. It's uh, may seem like a foregone conclusion to the viewer, but I promise you, Dustin Johnson's taken nothing for granted. A 
as it stands right now, even if they gave him the one-stroke penalty, he still leads by two. And the two brothers, Austin caddying for Dustin. On their way to what Dustin hopes will be his final full swing of this 116th U.S. Open. After the heartbreak at Chambers Bay last year, the three putt at 18 he led the British Open after 36 holes and won 75 75. Tied for fourth at this year's Masters. What's going on with Shane Lowry at 17? No. What's that? No, I don't think so. I think they thought somebody caught it and threw it back into the rough, but it was just a ricochet. <laughs> Anything can happen here. No doubt about it. Back home in Ireland, they're rooting for their guy, Shane Lowry, at his club at Esker Hills. All the TVs there tuned to this U.S. Open Championship. We'll come back to Shane now, Dustin Johnson at 18. Probably the most important shot Dustin Johnson has ever hit right here. Paul is 190 yards. This is six iron. Barring the miraculous from Shane Lowry. Dustin Johnson will be off that Mr. Almost list. Jack Nicholas waiting for Dustin as well.
Let's look at this second shot one more time. And Joe, I was walking with Dustin with Scott McCarron and C.H. Harmon in the practice round Tuesday. And the prognosticator, C.H. Harmon, said Dustin Johnson has never hit it better than he's hitting it right now. Boy, did he prove that to be the truth. Just outside a city that cherishes those hard earned championships. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Dustin Johnson on his way to a U.S. Open championship. While he was playing 18, here's Lowry at 17. Well, he drew a pretty good lie, then chunked it, then drew a terrible lie. Now he has another long putt for par. So that was shot number two for Shane Lowry. And now here is shot number three here at 17. Yeah, it drew a terrible lie here. When it rains, it pours, man. You just can't seem to turn it around. He started this final round leading by four. You know, Joe, when you play so well for three days, you have a four shot lead. Now you're going to lose. It'll take some time to get over, but it's pressure. It's hard out here. How can one guy go from playing so well to playing so poorly overnight? It's called the U.S. Open. Well, Oakmont's hard. No doubt about that. This is Dustin Johnson's moment in the sun. He's worked hard for this. Westwood finished to clear the stage for Dustin Johnson. This is blazing fast down this hill. I hate to say that, but get carried away here. stretch that controversy on the ruling the potential one shot penalty meaningless finishing with a birdie at 18 and he's finally got his first major about to turn 32. And with that combination of power and finesse, who knows how many major championships will follow. Nothing easy about trying to win a golf tournament. 
can imagine the walk was pretty tough for Dustin Johnson today, but he seemed unflappable the entire week. The final stroke. The winners here in the history of this great country club, Oakmont. One of the stiffest challenges in all of golf. And the champions here are who's who in the world of golf and golf history. Here's the par putt for Shane Lowry at 17. While all that was transpiring at 18, Lowry for par. Trailing by four. But who's won here? Bobby Jones, an amateur championship here. Sam Sneed, a PGA championship here. Gene Sarah's in the same back in 1922. And then names like Armour, Parks, Hogan, Jack, Johnny, Larry Nelson, Ernie Els, Angel Cabrera, and now Dustin Johnson. And the first major championship in a U.S. Open coming for Dustin Johnson. Go back to 1962. We had that visit. We just saw Jack Nicklaus winning it in 62 after an 18-hole playoff with Arnold Palmer. There's still another pairing back there. We don't at this moment know how much Dustin Johnson is going to win by, but he is going to win this U.S. Open. They will review what happened at the fifth green. Determine whether it's a one stroke penalty or not, but that'll just be a footnote. You bet. Shane Lowry put himself in prime position here today, starting this final round with a four-shot lead with Dustin Johnson right behind him. It's pretty straight back in, yeah. Right now trailing by four. Come down just a shade left of it. Where's the flag? Uh, okay, under the window? Yes. Okay. Shade left? Shade left. Okay. It's a moment of three-way tie for second. Furick, Lowry, and Scott Piercy. Andrew Landry eight over on his round today. Just couldn't get it going. Shane Lowry six over on his round today. Safely into the middle of the green here at 18. Well, a disappointing round for Andrew Landry, but he should take a lot from this week. Forget about today, and the same goes with Shane Lowry. 
Good Winner both in Europe and in the States. A bit surprised, guys, that he played this poorly today, but talking to Ken Brown, our colleague, that he, if he has a weak spot, it's his putting, and that certainly has been very good today. He's been a total gentleman the entire day. Both of these guys have behaved properly in defeat. That's not always easy to do. Well, you never know how disappointing this is coming up the last hole when you had a four-shot lead and you're not going to win. But if you play this golf game long enough, it's going to happen. Better believe it. Now, DJ, you've got to get your scorecard right. All kinds of things, you know, you figure this day and age, every shot's documented on television. Why do we even need a scorecard anymore? But it's not just a formality. You've got to get your scorecard right. Got somebody in there to check you, to help you out. Nothing bothered Dustin Johnson this week. He missed a lot of putts. He could have easily gotten frustrated, but he was emotionless almost in his struggles and frustrations. Well-deserved applause for this last group. And how about applause for John Zimmers and the staff here at Oakmont Country Club. John is the superintendent. All those other superintendents to get this golf course into championship form and shape after all that rain Wednesday night and Thursday. A nice tip of the cap from Shane Lowry. A terrific player who in this U.S. Open came up short. We have no update yet as to whether that controversy is settled, and it is certainly many by now with regard to that penalty stroke or no right now. Five under. Well, the most powerful player won this tournament. He was 23 yards longer than the average drive. Is this going to be a putting contest or a ball striker's? You know, contest, I guess, and a bomber's paradise or an accuracy fest. I'll tell you what, Dustin Johnson was the bomber, and he was accurate as much as anybody. Lowry's got a birdie putt here at 18, as I mentioned, right now in a three-way tie for second. Andrew Landry, a birdie putt as well. Think about how times have changed. And what the purse is for this United States Open Championship. Back in 1994, the purse was a total of $1.75 million. Ernie Els won $320,000. 2007, the winner was Angel Cabrera, $1.26 million. Dustin Johnson will have $1.8 million coming his way. The purse close to $10 million. First U.S. Open back in 1895. Horace Rollins was handed $150. Wow. <laughs> well, what can you say about Andrew Landry? Never been in this position before. First time ever playing in a major, and he went through all the qualifiers to get here. Thousands of people tried to qualify for this event. It's a heck of an achievement just to get in, but to be in the last group in your first ever major, Andrew Landry, this could be a huge step in the right direction for him, even though he's let it get away a little bit today for sure. Yeah, Paul, I think he should be very proud. He's yeah. really handled himself well. He's a good young player, and you never know what this will make. Give him some confidence. He's played, he's hit some good shots today. Missed a lot of putts. We have just been told that they have confirmed that Dustin Johnson has been assessed a penalty for that ball moving and him causing it to move by their judgment, talking about the USGA. 
And so officially, Dustin Johnson shoots 69 today, four under for the championship, but a major victory nonetheless. Well, you kind of knew it. You know, I asked Jeff, you got the sense, the way he looked, Jeff Hall from the USGA, when he was up here with us, he, without saying it, gave the indication that yes, Dustin would be penalized. And a solo second, not to be for Shane Lowry. So Dustin Johnson will win the golf tournament. Jim Furyk tie for second. Dustin Johnson hit it 55 yards on average past Jim Furyk this week. That's the long and the short of it. We'll next see Shane Lowry on the big stage in the Olympics. In Rio, we'll represent Ireland. Was trying here today to become the first from the Republic of Ireland to win the U.S. Open Championship. Graham McDowell, Rory McIlroy from Northern Ireland. Here's Landry for par at 18. That's the way to finish. Back in 2007, Angel Cabrera won this championship at five over. Lowry for par. He only needed a top three finish to lock up his Ryder Cup hopes. So we'll see him again in September. Frustration and an exhale at the end of a long week. Four finish under par. Our winner, Dustin Johnson, at four under. And a wave to the crowd from Shane Lowry. He's a grizzled veteran. He knows he could have done this today. It just wasn't his day. I'm sure making his father, Brendan, proud. The great Gaelic football player, and here's the moment. A birdie at the last. The 72nd hole. A hug from his brother. A bow from Lee Westwood's caddy. And Tatum, happy Father's Day, Dad. A moment with Paulina. And a major championship for Dustin Johnson. He wins here at Oakmont Country Club. He is the 116th U.S. Open champion. Back after this.